So you want to work in the locomotive for the Oregon Coast Scenic Railway? Well, that's a fun thing to do. I've done it for some time. One of the things you're going to have to learn if you're going to work on the locomotive is how to lubricate it. We use four different types of oil plus grease. We do a whole bunch of stuff first thing in the morning. We do some things between each run. And depending on if it's a long day, we do its extra stuff as the day goes along. And you got to know what stuff goes in the right place. To start off with, let's talk about compressor oil. Compressor has two compartments, two cups to put oil in. You want to be careful not to tighten these tops too tight. They need to be just barely snug and the oil needs to be up to the thread line. Now this is a lubricator for the power reverser. It's over on the engineer's side in front of where he stands. And you need to take that top off and fill it with the same fluid that you put in the compressor, compressor oil. This is the hydrostatic lubricator. It uses a different oil. This is steam oil. We generally only have to fill it once in the morning. You can fill it from either side at the top. For some reason, I always fill it from the left side. And if you're not paying attention, I guarantee you, it'll overflow and make a big mess all over the place. This lubricates the steam side of the compressor. Now you'll see the little droplet there. This is the way that we determine how much lubrication is going to the compressor. Depending on who you talk to, it's between every 20 and 60 seconds you should have one of the drops. And as it heats up, you got to adjust it because the fluid gets more fluidy. And this is a mechanical lubricator. It lubricates the main pistons, the drive pistons. And of course, this uses the steam oil also. On the mechanical lubricator, you have a cup at the top that you can open to fill, and you also have a sight gauge on the side. I generally like it a little bit more full than sight gauge, but that's personal preference. Now anything that slides back and forth is going to take guide or way oil. This is the cup that you fill up for the main piston. What you do is you open the little window there, and you fill it up. And of course there's one on both sides. There's two of these. And while you're moving some of that whey oil around, you fill the top. It's kind of sticky, gooey stuff. And then put some on the slide itself. That way it starts out in the morning ready to go. This is the power reverser. This is what makes the locomotive go forward or reverse. And it takes a number of different kinds of lubricant. To start off with, once again it slides back and forth, and everything that slides back and forth takes whey or guide oil. There's a little cup on the top to fill, and then slop a little bit on the slider part. It also takes journal oil in a number of different places, just a little bit of a squirt. And don't forget the grease. There's one grease zerk on this one. Actually, they call it a button zerk. And this is the valve guide. Once again, it slides back and forth, so it takes way or guide oil and those two caps you just slip them off pour in the guide oil but boy make sure to put those caps back on you'll never hear the end of it if you don't replace those caps before you move on to someplace else and this is what the whole valve assembly looks like slides back and forth and back and forth if it happens to work out once in a while the locomotive will stop where you can put a little bit of Way oil, guide oil, right on that upper slider. Well, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Now the locomotive has small wheels in the front and the back. This is the trailing truck. This is the back part to hold up the weight of the firebox. And I like to give it a 10 count of journal oil right in that little hole there. Might be too much, but realistically oil is cheap. This is the leading truck. Once again, it's got a hole right there on top that you give it another 10 count of oil to make sure that it's getting ample lubrication. Oil's cheap, you know. Moving along with the journal oil, there are six main bearings for the drive wheels. There's four of these cups just right in front of the firebox. It's not a question of if you're going to drop these tops. It's just a question of when. And I like to give them a good 10 count and then refill them every couple of trips. Well, it depends. Sometimes three trips. Two more main bearings are forward of those previous four. Once again, you unscrew them, give them a 10 count, 
and when you screw the tops back on, not too tight, they'll never come off. In between the tender and the locomotive, there's a big heavy set of springs. What you want to do is add a squirt of oil every once in a while. It really cuts down the noise in the cab, makes it much better riding in the cab without those two things squealing. And then right under the firebox, there's a pivot here for the for the spring assembly. And that hole you see there, just a little squirt now and then. Not all the time, but a squirt once in a while. Now talking about the tinder, the tinder has friction bearings, the same thing as in most of the cars, which do require oil. What you do is you simply lift up that cover, put a little bit of oil in. It needs to be a small pool at the bottom, not an ocean of oil. This is the timing mechanism, which allows the locomotive to go forward or reverse. It has a number of places it move. Basically, any place it moves, give it a little bit of oil. In fact, this is where we oil before every single trip, just to make sure things are moving okay. Keep in mind a lot of this lubrication is the same on both sides of the locomotive. This is over in the other side now of the timing gear. And you'll see the same places on the other side here that you have to use the journal oil on. Now back up to the piston slider. There are some places up here also that we have to use the journal oil. Looking at it, you see the little hole there and then the other two spots. This is what we do every time before we leave on a trip. Now there's also a number of other places to put journal oil. Basically anything that moves round and round. Even if it doesn't go all the way around in a circle, it's not a slider. So everything that's not a slider gets journal oil. And generally all these things need just a little bit of a drop once in the morning. This is not an every trip affair. So get to know where all these spots are. This is the main support for the valve timing gear doesn't move very much but it's really heavy so it's got to be lubricated of course all of the spring hangers need to be lubricated once again they don't move very much but they do have to be able to move and if you don't oil them they're gonna squeak okay so what's left oh yeah we gotta do the grease now we've done all the oils it's time for the grease on the engineer side there's ten buttons grease buttons you can't call them zerks so don't forget the power reverser. On the fireman's side, it's about the same thing, except you only have nine grease buttons over here because you don't have the power reverser. Take your time and you can find them all. Four kinds of oil. You've got the compressor oil, you've got the steam oil, you've got the journal oil, and of course, you've got, you've got the whey oil. And the grease, don't forget about the grease. Well, lubricating the locomotive is definitely part of what you have to do if you're gonna be a locomotive employee. So learn what goes where and come and have some fun with us.